And it's welcome back to episode 15 or series three, episode five, if you're counting that way, of the um, Deep Analysis podcast, We Love Ugly Data. Um, I'm here fresh from the gym is Alan. Hi, Alan. Hello. Yep, you can't um, smell me. That's good. <laughs> well, that, that, that's fine. We're not, that's, we won't dwell on that. Um, Too much information. Yeah. For those of you who are new to the podcast, then we will talk about the format. Those of you who have been here every time, thank you for coming back again. You'll be familiar that part of the format is saying the format, and here's the format. The format is three topics, 30 minutes, roughly 10 minutes a topic about things we've published recently, things we're researching right now, places we may have visited, people we may have met, tableaus we may have, we may have seen, um, but stuff that's basically a sort of top of mind for us right now. Um, and the intro eats into the first topic, so I really should shut up and get into the first one, um, which again is one of our slightly sort of self-referential ones. Alan, we published five new um, vendor vignettes, vendor we profiles, did. if you're not familiar with them, with the uh, the deep analysis milieu. Yeah, yeah, we, yeah, no, I still call them vendor vignettes, but they're vendor profiles now. Uh, but whatever. Um, yeah, there's been there's been a drought of them, to be honest. We hadn't had any out in some time, and mm -hmm. I don't really know why that was. It was a bunch of things, I think. I mean, we were busy on other things for yes, sure. We but the truth is, there was like what three years maybe where so every second third briefing it was like whoa you're doing what oh my gosh that's something mm -hmm. well and then there's like yeah nothing it could and, you know it, it could be another one of those things where where a, where ai has sucked all the oxygen out of the room again yeah, it's partly you know. that and it's partly that you know five six years ago seven years ago even though there, there was there was lots of funding so there was lots of people spending money doing cool stuff or trying to do cool stuff and then it came to market right and there hasn't been that funding so it has been a bit of a drought but um we've got five out and um and uh i believe well i promise but we should have another five out in the next quarter or some something like that number anyway but well, there's some good ones here some let's get one. into those five let's get into those five um and without actually meaning to and without actually having this written down as a rehearsal um the first one of our five well, i've got them on screen um right now just for the people who are watching this rather listening to it the first one up and it's an alphabetical order they're not by size or anything like that alphabetical order is um ai 12z which is both ai and bootstrapped so actually when we're just talking yeah. about availability of money Although yeah. I don't think that's necessarily an issue with this organization um, and the kind of zeitgeisty nature of AI. The first one up is, is that one we're talking about, which is kind of interesting in the sense that one, it comes from, I don't want to use the word veteran, mainly because I don't want people to describe me as a veteran, although I probably already get into that status in life. But it's from people who want, who know the content management world backwards. Do you know what, um, man? They know it really well. I was in New York last week and uh, Jay Boyer event and um, mm -hmm. and when I was talking, I actually we were talking about um, AR, AI, LLMs, and sort of you know custom service and chatbots and blah blah, yep. blah 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 blah. Right, and I actually said I actually mentioned this because it was fresh in my mind, and you were going to talk about this week. And I said, oh, there was this one. I said, and I actually said to the audience, who mainly sort of CMS vendors. Of course. And, uh, and I actually said, I don't know if anybody remembers a guy called Bill Rogers at Ektron. I mean, it felt like everybody was going, oh, yeah, we all know Bill. <laughs> uh, I think uh, veteran is a, is, a, is a nice term uh, for, for Bill Rogers. And, yeah, so, uh, so AI12Z 12, AI 12 is very much Bill Rogers, friends and family, bootstrap startup. Very, so, but it feeds, it feeds very much into the, into the kind of content management publishing workflow in the sense of building a... Um, a vector database for um, for RAG, and we discussed that in the previous, yeah. in last month's podcast, to support um, generative AI, but really based on the idea that when you're you're producing you know uh, content for a content management workflow, you're doing the approvals. It's the latest greatest version. Therefore, as you're adding it into a vector database, it's an approved version. It's really kind of a way of bolting on a kind of content approval workflow onto the front of a of a, of a vector database that you're using to assist. Um, uh, generative AI. So it's a small company um, that's already yeah, got a, 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 a into. We were impressed. I mean, yeah. what was what was impressive was, um, yeah, I mean, I'll be honest, when we took the briefing, um, you know, we know Bill and Nicole of old, and, and of course I was going to take a briefing with them, but um, genuinely impressed. I mean, you know, we, I know we've got 
call others to talk about this, but uh, <laughs> but they really took the the importance of sort of guardrails, if that makes sense, um, mm -hmm. very seriously. I thought, and I actually genuinely thought of of the sort of the the niche tactical AI vendors we've looked at. I, I really genuinely thought this was one of the best we've seen. And I won't say this for all of them, but. The full, the full profile, the full Vendia is available for subscribers. If you want to get access to that, then get in contact. Um, there is a blog post. Um, well, this is the, the, um, the stuff on screen comes from. I've just basically taken a little paragraph from each one. So if you want to get a, a flavor for each one, I'll put that link in the show notes along with everything else. But if you want to get the detailed long version, then that's for subscribers only. So if you want to get in, uh, get in on that, you know how to get in touch on from AI12Z, which is small and bootstrapped, onto Appian, which is much larger and not. Um, focus a little bit on some of the stuff. I mean, you were at the Appian conference. One of the reasons yeah. we've we've, uh, we've been doing our podcast in a slightly strange uh, chronology, and the previous one that was for April was recorded in March, and now we're doing this one from May and really mid-May, is that you've been on the road, and one of the places you've been is with Appian. Absolutely. And I think I've said it before, I'll say it again, it's, it's genuinely one of my favourite conferences because, you know, who's the audience really? The audience there, yeah, it's enterprises, but it's largely systems integrators, right? Because they're the ones who are going to be working with this stuff. They're the ones that, in many ways who are going to be selling it. So you, you get a much more sort of unvarnished version of, of what's really going on. So it's a fascinating conference. And and Appian's being very, very ambitious here with the whole Process HQ products and, and uh -huh. the, the data fabric stuff. And I really buy into the vision, right? That all this complexity, we, we got to pull it together into one place and manage it properly. I think it is ambitious, though. I mean, you know, these aren't simple tools, but give credit where it's due here. Appian, um, they're out there and they're, they're yeah. They've got a vision and and so many don't. Well, and the vision for them, I mean, we saw this with, with the data fabric in sort of tw late 22 through 23 and Process HQ, which they flagged up that was coming because of their acquisition of Lana Labs a couple of years ago. Um, and it was announced formally at the conference this year. It's very much adding additional functionality for organizations who are already wedded to Appian as a, you know, a process engine for them. So mm -hmm. it, they're, they're really there to... I guess to in, to increase the capabilities, to increase the stickiness, um, but they're very much focused on the world of Appian, the Appian, the Appian world itself. And that's yeah. no, 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 that's not another criticism. Um, really an observation of adding yeah. more arms to your existing core product. Yeah, and um, and then with Apramor or Apramore, as yes. uh, the founder, Mr. Damas, um, likes to say. Um, you know, one of those sort of process mining vendors that we've, I guess, in a way, we've championed, right? Because and, and watch grow, grow from a relatively grow. small startup into quite a large company now. And with now a strategic partnership with Salesforce, I think that's the interesting bit here. Salesforce, you know, they're getting it. They've launched IDP. They're talking unstructured data. The MuleSoft acquisition is starting to sort of make its weight be felt within the company. This is a great fit for for, for Salesforce. I, I think the challenge with this and and with others, which I think we're going to talk about a are. bit, yeah. there is uh, you know not that many people are using process mine, and they should be. Yes. So I, I think it's great that um, I think it's good in in a couple of ways. Apramore's um, partnership with Salesforce because it basically brings process mining to a potentially huge audience well particularly an audience you for the most part as you said has no idea it exists yet has no idea nope. how important it potentially could be and yeah. particularly around something else that of course the law dictates we have to discuss which is ai um as we go on and it's uh, there's two more here that i know less well uh yeah Do docuvela 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 so uh, talking about veterans um uh -huh. veterans of uh um psg uh and sort of highland they and alfresco which right acquisitions anyway a couple of the the people from that era have sort of uh spun off a, um, a little startup and it is very early days for them but this really did catch my 
uh, tension because on the on, on the surface it seemed like whoa a stripped back simplified ecm system who needs another ecm system we got mm -hmm. more than enough out there as it is right <laughs> Um, but when you really look a little harder, you suddenly say, hmm, one of the big problems with enterprise AI is managing, curating, securing, yeah. blah, 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 uh, your content, right, that the AI is going to train on and use. And this looks like a really neat fit, right? Mm -hmm. Because it, it's, yes, it's stripped back. Yes, it's simplified. But it's incredibly scalable so there's not a lot more to say about that one but the, the, it's 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 a really honestly five years ago i don't think i would have given it a second glance that's the truth of it in this market with yep. ai readiness now be i think their timing whether that's luck or by planning i think the, there should be a lot of people looking at them well, and a good example with Docuvella, with AI12Z, and with Reshape AI, the last one we'll come on to, these are small organizations. I don't think they're likely to crop up most analyst companies' agenda. Um, you know, it's, it's an example of what we do in terms of, and I'm trying to make it sound like it's a big sell, but what we, what we try to define these uh, these innovative small companies, um, where we're often the first people, first analysts to, uh, to talk to. We well, typically are, and I'm I mean, I, I, I mean, I can't say for all of them, but pretty much, I would think. And, you know, Reshape AI is another one. And again, it's interesting here because uh, another set of veterans. Well, yeah, uh, from, from, from Papyrus. From Papyrus. And, uh, you know, oh, we do a no-code AI-based document processing and workflow system. Yeah, okay. Do you know what? This one really is no-code. This one. Yeah actually is and it seems to work it's been well engineered and it's targeted and what we really liked about this is because there's so many things say they're no code or low code right mm -hmm. and uh, that's it's not true it's lipstick but this one really is and what's cool about this is these people really understand uh -huh. true enterprise needs right yeah. so this is a workhorse and good for them yeah for that great yeah. to see so five more vendor vignettes you know where to get them if you want them um, remember where you heard of those companies first is all we will tell you um, <laughs> so um another project we've been working on you said you know we're, we're doing lots of things which aren't necessarily vendor profiles and that's true and one of those things is a project we've been doing with an ongoing project that we're doing with aim right now which the first derived output from this is this concept of um, five questions for AI readiness. Um, yeah. up, on, up on screen, for people who can got it on screen, is an infographic that we've worked on, which contains a uh, wonderful cartoon, Alan, yeah. in the center of it. Okay, it's fine. We don't have to go any further than that, but it's got, that, that is a cartoon, Alan, in it. We will go through this. But um, up on screen, we've got that. And we'll, it's not out at the time of recording this podcast, but very shortly after, you'll be able to download this infographic. And again, it will be in the show, show notes, etc. Yep. The, the, the purpose of us doing this was to try and encapsulate what are the questions which organizations probably should be asking themselves internally, just kicking it about, what are the, the, the red steps of readiness that we should be, be able to be able to answer positively before we start to invest in yeah. AI tools, not just Gen AI, but Gen AI is the one thing that's pushing it. And the starting so, point for us for this was, was kind of a... a, a Sign of kind of a joke, which was <laughs> um, a, a, a basic flow chart that says, are you ready to uh, introduce AI? Can you answer all these five questions? If the answer is no, you can't. Um, but we think yeah. we probably need a bit more than that. I think, it, yeah, it's in, this is super interesting because the, the infographic, I hope everybody downloads, it's free. Um, you know, I mean, and we'll, we'll put the links in for you. But uh, I this had only just been published and i i mentioned the boyer event um janice boyer for those who know him he's been running um events and communities of practice for, for many many years and they're very good um anyway i brought this slide up this infographic up and it, it basically was the showstopper which i suspected it would be um the the thing is you're right matt but I think justified arrogance if there's such a thing we've okay. seen so many stupid things saying about AI readiness and you read them and you think no 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 
Um, you need to bring it back to absolute basics, right? Well, and I mean, let's, go, let's, let's run through the basics. We've yeah. got this, we've got them here, and there are five. We're not going to go into great detail on them because. But I think you know, the first two are really critical, right? The first the number, one, the number one, number one, uh, number the title one. of which is: Have you identified the processes that you think AI will improve? Yeah, and and this is the big thing because it's followed by number two, which oh, well, is it should be identify the tasks now. But that's profound. I mean, seriously. OK, OK. We see I mean, I could go on to Google now. I could bring up a hundred examples. I don't think that's an exaggeration. AI will transform your business process. No, it won't. No, it won't. Right now, which business process are you having a problem with? Which one do you want to improve? That's your starting point. But then you move to number two, which specific tasks within or subtasks mm -hmm. whatever within that broader process are you going to target ai for right mm -hmm. so we, you, you're getting detailed here right what is it specifically going to do very much like an rpa tool right an mm -hmm. rpa tool isn't going to transform a business process but it is going to want to make some tasks within it which can have an impact right a huge yeah. impact on the whole thing and so the idea of this, and I mean, uh, full disclosure here, I didn't do that much work on this. This was was Matt and, and Cash, and uh -huh. I think you, you guys have done a great job, and I just feel awkward that my picture's in the middle of it. But That's fine. We're happy that it's your picture and not ours. It's fine. But it's basically, it's five steps, right? Identify the process, identify the tasks. You know, now getting to sort of something we talk about a lot, identify you know we've used the term knowledge here right but ultimately yeah. it's the data you know the information whatever terms you want to use but so step three you have do? you identified and quality controlled the existing pools of knowledge your field into the ai and this again is a big deal because yeah. people say i've got the information but we're not questioning that you've got the knowledge and information somewhere where is it clean is it accurate is it up to date is it maintained is it in amongst a ton of junk? That's a big job there. That's one big job. So, yeah. and, and then you move on to the people, right? Have I got the right people for this project? Yeah, so step four is, do you know which people and skills you'll need to build and operate your AI right. solution? You can't just take an AI tool, plug it in, switch it on and walk away. It doesn't work like that. Now, some people are trying to do that, but that's a very bad idea. Right. Mm -hmm. So, again, it's a bit about the people. And then the last one is really about, you know, what have decision makers at your organization agreed on which measurements to use to judge the AI success. So this ain't cheap. <laughs> I mean, no. It's not cheap stuff. These are big projects. Um, so what does success mean? Does it mean a, a massive reduction in, in uh, errors? Is it uh, massively reducing uh, processing times? Uh, is it increasing revenue? Is it increasing customer yep. service? I don't know. You got to figure that out. But in, until you've gone through these five steps, uh, I don't think there's anything wrong with playing around with Copilot and whatever and getting familiar. But you shouldn't yep. be committing money and, and resources to a project unless you've answered these. And they are basic. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. The, the information that, uh, you know, uh, like, like you and I spend a, a portion of each week um, sitting into, I guess, what you would refer to as communities of practice. So listening mm -hmm. to and interacting with, with, not with just with vendors, with consultants, but with end users of technology. And I do a lot of these around around uh, AI. And I was one, on one last week, which was uh, specifically about LMM performance. So comparing LMM provider with LMM provider. And it's fascinating. It's, it's in, you know, Talking about people who are doing a lot of, you know, large scale benchmarking of, of comparing, you know, versions of Lava against what Mistral are doing compared to, you know, what Gemini, how where Gemini is and where the various flavors open, open AI. And this is interesting and it's great to a point yeah. because the specific individual benchmark performance of these, these models is really interesting. But are we benchmarking them to our to our point here against the process task? content skill set and kpi or elements that we are going to practically be using in our organization so this benchmark that makes 
this model better at this task than that task? How closely does that represent what we're going to be doing? Do we need to worry about the model we're going to be uh, exploiting to, to in, inform a, a, a task or a process before we've actually defined whether that's going to work and who's going to operate it and how we're going to define whether it's successful or not. So it's not just a case of putting the horse before the cart. It's a case of putting the jet engine before the cart a little bit here. Well, because, yeah, we are, yeah. because we're technologists, we're all, we, want to, we want to really understand the minutiae of a model. Oh, of course we do. And that's cool. But unless we are building these foundations right to understand what are the, what are the questions we should be asking to infer the, the, the result that tells us which is the best model, is that not a better use of a larger portion of our resources? Yeah, and you know the the other thing, just just to round this one off, I think. But mm -hmm. you know, infographics like that. I think this is great infographic. I do, and obviously I'm biased, but <laughs> well, because your pictures on it. <laughs> well, no, that's not the reason. Um, but the, the the bottom line is they should be simple, right? Because mm -hmm. it's a phrase I I've overused for the years. Um, common sense isn't that common. I mean, this is common sense to you and me. This is common sense to cash. But a lot of people don't know this, right? They just they just know there's this cool thing called generative AI or AI or, or machine learning or whatever out there. They don't know this. And I think this is really, this is a free resource, right? And this is oh. really helpful for people. And I had actually used it at the supply chain event I was at um, in Ohio and again, you know, all the phones came out to take a picture of it, right? Yep. Because this is basic stuff. Um, and this is the kind of thing when somebody internally is saying, oh, we're, you know, we've got a mandate to do some AI in this department, bring this one up. Yeah, bring it up. You know, they, are, we, they are kind these, of cumulative. You start yep. with one and if you can do one, do two, but yep. we're pretty adamant, unless you can do all five, you shouldn't be doing anything more than that. Um, and if you're and if your your C level above you says you should be, then send them to us. Send yeah. them to us, and we'll tell them. And we'll, we'll, tell, we'll them. tell them. We'll even we'll even even possibly even tell them for free. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I mean, seriously, because uh, you know, look, the reality is, for all our cynicism, AI is a big deal. A lot is happening, right? But there's a danger. A lot of it's just going to be messed up. And it doesn't need to be that way. No, no, it really doesn't. It really doesn't. On to our, our last topic of the day. Um, and this is kind of one that came out a little bit, I think, because of you're the kind of person who has lots of conversations when you travel, whereas I'm the kind of person that when I used to travel, I spend all my time avoiding conversations, which made me a terrible networker. You're better at this than I am. But, <laughs> but it means that when you come to write the newsletter, which is a piece of content, which we don't actually mention very often on this podcast, but it is probably the one which is interacted with by more people than anybody else. That's because it's true. an email newsletter and isn't very cool. We don't mention it very much, but really, it's really interesting. It has distinct content from everything else, right? There's, there's stuff which is unique to the newsletter. Um, really, you should subscribe to it. Weirdly, I don't always get it, but I know we discussed a lot of the topics were in it. I know, I know. So if That's you want to subscribe, we will put the details in the... Um, um in in the show notes it is like all these other things it is it is free um you can get it and distribute to your your friends family neighbors um whatsapp groups as you so wish We're at, at, at no cost or penalty to yourself but something that, that, that came up from um from your travels alan and it's something that we've touched on we touched on a little bit last time when we were looking at the work intelligence and research output and we mentioned it a little bit when we were talking about about workfellow and then if you followed that story of course workfellow then got acquired as they closed they got acquired by process maker which is a great story which is again shows that actually a lot of people do understand ta task bar task mining just doesn't necessarily have the enterprise value just yet but in um the last month's uh, newsletter the new one's just about to come out um we were talking about that yesterday funny enough which is why this was on the agenda you asking like you know why are process and task mining tools regardless where they come from why they're not getting the traction um and you were having conversations with people, particularly, I think, at Appian about this, right? Mm. Uh, yeah, well, yeah, actually, a uh, bunch of places. Uh, yeah, the Appian one was the one that triggered it, for sure. Uh, conversation yeah. was yeah. And I'm not naming, I'm not saying who said what or anything, but, you know, big systems integrators, right? You know, the KPMGs, the WIP pros, the whatever of yeah. this world, right? 
um and and it was just a constant theme it was like yeah yeah no it's really good but you know i don't know people have got higher priorities and i'm like how can you have a higher priority than figuring out and and shortening the business analysis mm -hmm. phase and you know the, the general consensus was too expensive too complicated yep and and I, then then there's definitely uh i mean that there's truth to that there, there is truth to that but that to me is a sign that people are trying to boil the ocean here right um that you know if, if you really comes back to what we're saying about ai readiness right you can't just transform an entire business process right and i think with process mining if you're genuinely trying to get a picture of everything that's going on from end to end that yeah. is going to be very expensive very complicated and well, by, uh, by its nature it requires plumbing into the big pieces of engineering uh, yeah. enterprise tooling that you have um yeah. to start the starting point is you have to do a big integration project and that in itself is quite scary it, it is but to me the thing is that those who actually do it reckon it's worth every penny yes because they can reduce you know seriously six six months of uh manual business analysis uh down to a month right mm -hmm. or a few weeks whatever at best probably a few weeks is a bit of an exaggeration right but yep. they can they can they can slash that time so that's one benefit but the other benefit is you're actually pulling up the log data this is telling you exactly what's really going on right as opposed mm -hmm. to what somebody told you was going on so you've got a, a much more granular, much more defensible and accurate, frankly, picture of, of what's happening. And, and so they, they are hugely valuable. So I think that something's going wrong with the selling of them, if that makes well, sense. Was, well, while, you were, while you were on the road, I was having a conversation with a, um, a, a CEO of, a, of a, a company in this market who does both text and, um, and, and process, uh, task and process mining um, about this very topic. Because I wanted to understand, like, you know, tell me how this is and, and tell me how this works. And he, you know, he admitted that the big process projects are a hard sell because they're big projects, right? That right. the meantime from the start of a project to the time when you're actually getting something which is actionable is often to, into three figure days minimum. And mm -hmm. at that point, what you tend to get is, oh, there's a problem. And often the starting problem was, yeah, we know there was a problem. We want to know how to fix it. But the first point is we need to quantify the problem before you can quantify the fix. And that often can feel quite difficult and daunting. And it is why using it in, in, uh, alongside task mining is helpful because task mining, without getting into the, the vagaries of the difficulties, you get to a lot of this stuff much quicker. Right? Much because if, because you're not doing the enterprise plumbing, you're building the log files effectively from scratch at the point of the, the point of use. If you've got the right design of user group, the right users you're recording effectively, and you're doing it with their cooperation, and it's all you know a, um, a kind of peer based project, you will get a, an idea about what's working and what's not working from that group very very quickly. So in terms of being able to um, um, to move projects on faster, what what he was saying in their projects they're doing is using a combination of, the, of both, which gives give us task mining for indicative, which allows them to do early prescriptive um, advice while building in the longer process thing, because the process the, the the process money is likely to be that that you will turn into the long term operational that's, thing because it hooks it, into the the enterprise it, systems. That's the bit that's missing in the story at the moment. So yeah, we go back to the vendor vineyard on Appian. They get it, right? Yep. They get it. Um, I think UiPath gets it, right? So I mean, th there are people out there who get it, but and Apple more as well. Yeah, uh, yeah, and Apple more as well. Um, most buyers don't get it, and they're not being told it. But yeah, yeah, it's a bit of work, but it's really worth it, and it's not just for this project. Right. This yeah. is ongoing. And, you know, in five, 10 years time, I'll be able to look and see what's going on here. And that's huge. Right. That's a huge thing. I mean, I can remember back when uh, enterprise dashboards were a thing. And apparently, you know, you had these sort of portals where it would uh, be like a speedometer going up yeah. to red yeah. or something. I mean, they were useless. Right. But the idea was good. But mm -hmm. here's something that actually works. Um, so anyway, long story short, 
uh, still big fans of task mining and process mining. I mean, way back in the day, I actually was a process analyst and I would have killed for something like this back then. So they're great, but um, really rubbish job selling them at the moment and explaining them. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I shame. think you know, there's, there's all sorts of factors which affect that. The market, as we discussed again, go back. We're not going to repeat it now. Go back to the last podcast because we talked about how the market is so weirdly skewed, where there's one or two massive vendors and a huge long tail of tiny ones. The voice of those and the method of selling for those one or two large ones, slowness, Signavio, etc., tends to dominate the way in which everybody thinks of it. And because Salonis particular have a very specific way of approaching this, a very specific way of, of talking about it, and a very particular focus in the type of processes and the type of customers and the type of enterprise systems they want, people think, well, that's it. We're not that, therefore it's not for us. So yeah. it's, been good in, it's been good in terms of popularizing it, but it's also been slightly negative in thinking that's the only methodology yeah. that works. It has, and uh, I won't sort of... Um, I mean, I'll protect the guy's identity in this company, but, you know, I did talk to somebody from one of those big uh, vendors uh, just a couple of weeks ago, and uh, he's really frustrated, right? And and his thing is, is that, I mean, he actually said the, 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 the analyst community doesn't really get it, press doesn't get it, um, and he actually said our marketing doesn't seem to be very effective. I mean, it's a really good tool set that's still going under the radar. So Gartner, I'm going to have a dig at Gartner here. Um, Gartner's got oh, a process mining um, magic quadrant. And by the way, good, good work. You know, the thing I'm going to have a little dig at was their projection that 26%, I think it was, of, of uh, enterprises going to be used, using process mining um, within two years. I would love that to be right. But my gosh, there's some work to do to educate. Um, well, I would as, I would argue actually that, that if you took that. if you took a CTO panel in two years' time and asked them to define what it is, twenty six percent would get it right. So it's not a case of use of actually defining what it is and understanding how it fits into their tool set in two years' time would be progress, let alone usage. Yeah. So again, if you are trying to sell your process mining. Uh, or task mining tools to the world, um, you might want to talk to a company like Deep Analysis. We might be able to help. <laughs> oh, yes, what a wonderful idea. You should definitely do that. But certainly, if you're in that market as in, in, in consulting or in that market in selling software and you're not speaking to us, we'd love to have that conversation. Talk to us about how you're selling. Because you know what? Maybe we're not maybe we're not hearing everything maybe actually there's a wonderful way you're taking this to market which is really successful which actually changes those slightly negative um, vibes that we're getting about how it's selling much as we love the technology maybe we're wrong come and tell us we would love to be wrong and we'll tell everybody about how you uh, were <laughs> how you how you, 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 you turned our mind around we would love that to be the case that's it though this time that's it we, we're out of time again so next time three more topics 30 minutes to discuss them in Thanks for joining us fresh from the gym, Alan. Thank you. Lovely. And thank you for joining us. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Wow.